Good to see you. Um, let's talk briefly about the uh, uh, the ubiquitous and ridiculous Labour government uh, and all the freebies they've been receiving. Still, no, there's no answer coming from Lord Ali uh, as to what he got out of it. You know, in fact, he said to the Telegraph yesterday, please don't ask me about my donations to the Labour Party uh, because it's not very nice. I know. <laughs> it's all very pathetic, isn't it, really? Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know if you saw, I, I tweeted a clip yesterday, Mike, um, Quite shockingly, Starmer was saying of, about politicians being so self-entitled yes. and, it's, and it's time for change. Yet, um, I think they're the most self-entitled government in history that I've seen in modern history. I think they are. So, I, I, I just, one thing the public can't stand, and, and I'm, sh I'm sure you're the same, I feel the same, is this the hypocrisy. Yeah. You cannot lambast the people and do exactly the same thing yourself. Exactly it's right. Not. And also, they've tried to, 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 to hide it. They've tried to kind of avoid admitting what it is that they've done. Um, I think more and more stuff will come out. I mean, only yesterday uh, we found out that Rachel Reeves, um, I think, had taken a family holiday to Cornwall mm. um, and forgotten to declare that actually she took her entire family with her. There's going to be loads of this kind of stuff. Lord Ali's obviously addicted to having um, sort of, you know, political access, if you like. You know, he gives money to Sue Gray's son. She rewards him with a Downing mm. Street pass. Nobody can tell me yet what he was doing in Downing Street. Uh, what we now know is that he was involved in, in planting somebody who helped pick candidates. Yes, I saw that. It's. <laughs> I think it's we're, we're going to find more and more is uncovered over the coming months. Uh, another thing about Rayner, though, is um, the, the money she's taking for clothes, etc., mm. and saying she's working class. I mean, I'm working class. Right. I've never took money for clothes. And any donations that I've received has purely gone on political campaigning, literally paying for literature because um, leaflets to go through doors and pay delivery. Yeah. You know, you don't have donors paying for your clothes, glasses or ever, Mike. No, it's ridiculous. And I said um, to Dale Vinch yesterday, home on the show, he confessed, and confessed to me to giving £5 million to Labour just before the election. Uh, and I said, who did you give it to? And he said, I gave it to the party. And I said, what did they spend it on? He said, I don't know. I said, well, don't you care what they spent it on? He said, no. So I think there needs to be a much more rigorous process yeah. by which we can find out who's giving the money, where it's going, because for all I know, it could have ended up in somebody's back pocket. Um, exactly, but but also look at the trade unions at the moment, Mike. I mean, the the headlines. Well, this is been... terrifying, isn't it? Uh, oh, absolutely, and I think we're going to go back to the nineteen seventies yeah. under Labour and what the trade unions are planning. They, they want to take control of the economy, don't they? Well, Mick Lynch knows a thing or two about how to pressurise governments because he managed to pressurise the, um, uh, the the Labour government into giving him a massive pay rise. Uh, he's going to get another one out of them. He managed to get one out of the Tories, I think. And this is a guy who is dead set on making sure, because he's not even a... The RMT stopped backing, um, I think, Labour quite some time ago in terms of finances, but they're still, back, they're still capable of bringing them to their knees mm. if they don't do what they want. And I'm, I'm afraid old enough to have lived through the 70s and it wasn't pleasant. You know, I remember what it was like. I used to go to school one day a week, um, only in the mornings because there wasn't enough fuel to heat the building. I, we used to sit at home uh, in the dark, um, one, hour in the, in, one hour of light and electricity in the morning, one hour in the evening. And this was all in the winter because there were no um, uh, power stations which were uh, all on strike. And also, Mike, um, you know, if they're doing all this, uh, trying to take control of the economy, I mean, they're putting a stranglehold on business already, aren't they? Yeah. Um, with the demands for workers. And uh, I think we're going to see under this government that, um, and the impending tax rises, of course, um, we will see productivity and investment nosedive. I mean, why would anybody invest in Labour Britain? Rachel Reeves yesterday tried to make out that all of the doom and gloom that she'd been uh, preaching for the best part of the last 10 weeks uh, turns out not to be true. Now she's suddenly become optimistic. Um, and similarly, uh, Keir Starmer's going to speak this afternoon uh, and tell us all that there's light at the end of the tunnel. But as somebody pointed yeah. out to me today, it might not be a light, it might be the front of a train coming at you. The, the thing is, Mike, though, that there was already light at the end of the tunnel. Because don't forget that um, in the last quarter... Um, we was um, doing better than the rest of the G7. Yeah. We was um, only just behind the US, where the, um, our economy. Um, but I do... F so, really, they are starting to feel the benefits now of what we've put in place as the previous Tory government, as they usually do at Labour who come into power. But 
I think they're going to wreck what we try to do. Yeah. Well, there's no question that the economy is in far better shape than they made out it was. You know, yeah. as you said, it was the leading uh, country in the G7. Uh, well, they're the, using the... it as an excuse, Mike, to yeah. actually um, do all these crazy things like tax rises, which is going to make Britain even less competitive. Mm. And saying that these black, there's this black hole and, and punishing our pensioners, punishing the, anybody who's got aspiration, wants to send their children to private schools. I think they are the party who do not like aspiration. No, I think that's absolutely right. And so when he speaks this afternoon, he's also hiding um, from the public because he didn't give an interview on Sunday, which he normally would have done. Most prime ministers yeah. do the Sunday round and talk to Laura Kunzberg and um, talk to uh, people at Sky and ITV and all of that, d avoided that. Um, I don't know whether he's going to do an interview tonight or whether he's going to do one tomorrow, mm -hmm. but he's also buried the uh, the vote on uh, pensions, um, uh, the pension fuel benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, he's moved it from Monday to Wednesday because he thinks nobody will notice. I mean, it's so blatantly amateurish, the way that they're trying to manipulate the media and failing at every turn. And, and also, I mean, look at all the cabinet ministers who's been on the airwaves. It, quite frankly, it's embarrassing, Mike. Yeah. The, the same. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I said Jonathan... earlier, Rainer, I'm working class. Um, oh, my child wanted to go to this concert. You know, I mean, what kind of excuses is, is, I know. is all this? Well, I had Jonathan Reynolds on here the first time ever in the in the history of the show since July the fourth that they put a government minister up. Um, I doubt that they'll be back because he was busy defending um, the wearing of, of free clothes. And then, like, very next day, Keir Starmer sort of threw him under the bus, having sent him out to defend it, and said, oh, no, we're not going to do it anymore. Mm. <laughs> it's I a mean, very funny way to run uh, an organisation. I mean, did you also see, um, I don't know if you saw the pollster, John Curtis said... Yeah, um, we had him on the show just now. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I missed that. I mean... I, I really do think that Labour, people who supported Labour, is getting by his remorse now. Yeah. But the big thing for me is we will get a Labour government again if Conservative and Reform do not come together in some way, whether it's standing as joint ticket mm. candidates or something. But we we will continue with this Labour government after Labour government ruining our country. Yeah, and I see that you noticed Gary Neville's uh, activities up in uh, Liverpool <laughs> this week as well, because because uh, so did I. But um, uh, what an absolute plonker he is. I mean, <laughs> this is a guy who uh, used to tweet every single day, um, all the time, about the Tories, about how terrible they yeah. were. You know, he didn't tweet much about football, but he tweeted an awful lot about how useless the Tories were. Since July the 4th, until Labour Party conference, I think he's only tweeted twice. Once in defence of the uh, uh, the football regulator that, that Keir Starmer wants to introduce, because he says he thinks it's a great idea to get away from FIFA uh, and uh, UEFA. Well, he would say that, wouldn't he? But now suddenly he's all over conference, acting like he's the sort of conquering hero, running around as if he's like um, you know Russell Crowe out of Gladiator. I mean, I seriously think he's trying to go in the Lords. I think he's trying. Yeah, to I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but also the, the other people staying silent. Carol Voderman. Oh yeah. Um, and also Gary Lineker, the yes. greatest critics meant to be standing up for the poor. Where are they now? Yeah, I know. It's funny, isn't it? They've all they've all lost their voices. Carol Vorder has decided to protect her tweets, even though she gave an interview oh, I've just, noticed that. just a week and a half ago saying she didn't give a stuff, not her words, uh, about what people thought of her. So bring it on, she said. Well, you can't anymore because you can't tweet her anymore. Uh, and you've got to be authorised to follow her. Not that I'm going to follow her anyway, but you no. see that. She's got to authorise a follow No, her I don't fancy that. Her. It's not for me. <laughs> not for me. Thank you very much indeed. Andrea, what are, you, are you going to be going to the Tory party conference? I'm, I'm only going on the Sunday. Um, yeah. I'm speaking on the Sunday at Fringe event. And, okay. um yeah. I, Any great I hopes it. coming out of that? I mean, I think a lot of people are saying to me, you know, the Tories need to be a little bit more um, proactive, you know, because there's a lot mm. of cobblers coming out of Liverpool, quite frankly, oh. and I don't see any Tory MPs or certainly even leadership candidates having uh, a go. That's, that's one reason, Mike, that I've been as outspoken as I am, even though I'm a former MP, because we've got to hold Labour to account. It's quite, frankly, quite shocking what mm. they're doing.